This video will show you how to create a new dashboard. To begin, select the Dashboards tab at the top. Then open the folder into which you want to save the new dashboard. To open a folder, simply click on the folder. In this case, we'll save our new dashboard into the folder called Examples. From the top menu, select the New Dashboard option. Provide a name for the new dashboard, and then select the data set that will provide data for the dashboard to display. In this case, we'll use a data set called Sales Explore. If you have not yet created a data set, please see the videos on how to create a data set. Press OK to create the new dashboard. To add components into a dashboard, simply drag the desired components from the component panel on the left. For example, to add a chart, drag a chart component into the dashboard. This will automatically open the chart editor in the left panel. If the chart editor is not open, you can always press the edit button at the top of the chart to open the chart editor. Use the chart editor to configure the chart. For more information about creating charts, please see the videos on how to create a basic chart and how to create other specific chart types. You can add other data view components in the same way, for example, tables and crosstabs. Again, simply drag the desired component into the dashboard. In the case of a crosstab, this opens the crosstab editor, where you can set up the crosstab by defining row headers, column headers, and measures. In the case of a table, this adds a blank table into which you can add desired columns from the data set. For more information about creating all of these components, please see the related videos. To resize components on a dashboard, select the component and drag the resize handles which appear on each border of the component. To move a component on the dashboard, click and drag on the move handle at the top left corner. You can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move components. Note that some components, like tables and cross tabs, always remain locked to the grid. That is, they move in increments of the grid. Other components, such as charts, move independently of the grid. Therefore, you can resize and move a chart wherever you wish on the dashboard. For components that move freely of the grid, you can hold down the control key on the keyboard while pressing the arrow keys to move the component in pixel by pixel increments. Hold down the shift key while clicking and dragging on a component to move it in a horizontal or vertical direction. Note that when you resize a component and the component dimensions align either with the grid or with another component, green highlights are indicated on the dashboard. This will help you to lay out components that are aligned with one another. To filter the data that's displayed on a dashboard, add a selection component. The easiest way to do this is simply to drag the field that you want to filter, for example, category, into the dashboard in an empty location. For a string field, this will create a selection list, like you see here. This allows you to make selections of the values in the particular field. Note that this filters both the table and the chart, because both of these components are based on the data set that is being filtered. If you drag a date field or a numerical field into the dashboard this way, this creates a range slider that allows you to select a range of dates or a range of numerical values. For more information about filtering dashboards, again, please see the related videos. To display a key performance indicator or a single aggregated value, use a text element or a gauge. To do this, drag the gauge or the text element into the dashboard, and then drag the field that you want the gauge or text element to aggregate onto the gauge or text element, in this case the total field. This gauge is now aggregating the total for whatever categories the user has selected and whatever range of dates the user has selected. All components on a dashboard have a properties dialog box 
To access the Properties dialog box, right-click on the component and select Properties. For a gauge, these properties include setting the minimum and maximum values on the gauge, in addition to the gauge face graphical design. The Data tab of a component allows you to change the field that is being aggregated, as well as the aggregation method. Under the Advanced tab for a component, you will often find specific properties for that component. For a gauge, these properties include ranges that allow you to define colored regions on the gauge. Other components have different properties that are specific to those components. Each component also has a Script tab that allows you to write a JavaScript expression to set properties for the component. To add a text component into the dashboard, you can either drag a text component from the component panel. This adds a new text component, which you can edit by double-clicking. Or you can simply double-click in an empty region of the dashboard to add a new text component. You can use the formatting options in the toolbar at the top to format a text component, for example, to make the font bold or large. And you can also use the formatting buttons in the toolbar to format other values in a dashboard, for example, the values on the y-axis of the chart. We might consider representing these as currency. Likewise for the values in the crosstab. To move a group of components together, simply select the desired components by dragging across them. You can also shift-click or control-click to select multiple components, and then drag them down using the drag handle, or by using the arrow keys on the keyboard. Here we've made enough space at the top of the dashboard so that we can now put this text element at the top as a title. The other text element here can be removed. To align data or text, again, select the component that you want to align and use the buttons in the toolbar at the top. You can also add background or foreground colors the same way. Keep in mind that if you don't see the desired formatting option in the toolbar at the top, you can usually find it in the Format dialog box. To access the Format dialog box for a given component, right-click on the component and select Format. Here you can specify the way the data itself should be formatted. For example, if the data should be formatted as a date, or as a number, or as a currency, and so on. You can also specify additional formatting options such as font, color, border, and alignments. For more information about formatting components, please see the video on formatting. To save the dashboard that you create, press the Save button in the toolbar. To return to the main Dashboards page, select the Dashboards tab at the top. Note that the dashboard that you create is now listed together with the other dashboards, in this case, in the Examples folder. To open the dashboard for viewing, simply click on the dashboard itself. To open the dashboard for further editing, Click again on the Dashboards tab and locate the dashboard. Then select Edit Dashboard from the Dashboard menu. Make the desired modifications to the dashboard. In this case, we're just fixing the position of some components and adding a background using a rectangle component. And setting some borders for components to make them look a little bit better. To ensure that this dashboard displays well on devices of different sizes, open up the Options dialog box by pressing the Options button in the toolbar. Select the Layout tab and specify whether you want to scale the dashboard to the screen size or whether you want to define a layout for the dashboard. A layout for the dashboard will allow you to create a version of the dashboard that is specific to particular devices, such as phones or tablets. 
please see the video on laying out a dashboard for more information. Press the Save button again to save any changes and return to the Dashboard screen. Again, to view the dashboard, locate the dashboard in the Examples folder and simply click on the dashboard itself. The dashboard is automatically scaled to the screen and you can see that the dashboard now reflects our recent changes. This dashboard is now fully functional. For more detailed information about any of the components that you see in this dashboard, as well as other components that are available in the component panel, please see the other videos in this series.